Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Unscaled Travel Show. I'm Jeremy Long, the Full Metal Traveler. And as always, you can catch all of our past episodes and interviews on fullmetaltraveler.com. You know, see my beautiful face and hear my beautiful voice whenever you want to at the touch of a button. Uh, we are talking about New York and all of its greatness, the appeal of, uh, you know, going there. It's usually one of the first cities whenever you're younger, you really think about visiting if you're not born and bred there. Uh, it's really one of those places that becomes a beacon to people from around the world. So, you know, we were thinking, who better to reach out to than someone who not only lives there, but also works on Broadway and is an influencer, lifestyle, all of that, the lovely and talented Vivica Chow. Vivica, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Hey, thanks for having me, Jeremy. Well, you know, I, I'm really excited to talk to you because I've been a lot of places. But I only recently visited New York for the very first time. So I can't offer the normal guidance that I uh, usually would to people. So I got to lean. I got to lean on someone who knows the city so much better than I do. But before we get into that, let's talk about you. You uh, perform on Broadway. You've lived there a number of years. You've, you've worked there. You've walked the streets and everything. Let's talk about your career, what you do, and, and how you got started. Yeah, so I grew up in Hong Kong. I moved from one big city to another big city. Wow. And ever since I was, you know, nine, I was like, I really want to be a Broadway performer. So ever since I was nine, I did that. I, you know, I persisted. And right out of college, I got hit by a stroke of luck and booked my first Broadway show and did that for a whole year. And right after my Broadway engagement, I just realized I'm so passionate about storytelling, any type of form of storytelling. And I started exploring different mediums in terms of storytelling, and it led me to where I am. So now I love using social media platforms to share the joy and passion I have for New York City. And I love uplifting small businesses and specifically AAPI community along the way. Well, let's talk about that. Let is let's here's the scenario. You know, we have first time visitors. They've, you know, gone through the wonderfulness that is JFK Guardia, <laughs> and, you know, they've got their hotel They're They're in New York proper. They're settled in. Now they're looking at the city map. What are some of those first places, just being tourists, that they should just go ahead, just run and get all of this stuff out of your system? I mean, I have to say Times Square, right? Like, I know you can't come to New York and not visit Times Square. And it's yeah. funny now because living here, it's the place I avoid. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but the, there's something amazing about that energy because I remember the first time I visited New York, it was 2011 and I think I was maybe 17. First time in America actually. And I was shook by this inspirational energy that was surrounding me. It's so creative. You know, you're looking at these big Broadway billboards and I guess, you know, at the time because I wanted to be on Broadway that had a huge part to do with it. I was like, I want to be in one of these amazing shows, you know, the lights flashing. There really is something so magical and electric about it. And, you know, there are so many street performers in Times Square that is just so entertaining to watch. They're so skilled. And you're like, how are you tumbling and flying over seven people? How is that <laughs> physically possible? I just think it's definitely an experience to yeah. experience as a first timer in New York City. And of course, you know, I love suggesting the High Line. Walking from the meatpacking district, all the way to Hudson Yards. It's so beautiful. And honestly, my favorite part is looking at these like crazy expensive apartments that look like bubbles while you're walking the High Line. You can't miss it. It's really incredible. And the view is gorgeous. It's a free thing to do. It's affordable. You don't have to pay anything. And I guess like museums and Broadway do, shows. Do you also do that. Do you Are you one of those people like, I, I'm really bad at this. I go to a place mm -hmm. and once I get to a certain neighborhood, I pull up something like Zillow or, you know, some real estate thing. And I start looking, I'm like, huh, let, let me start imagining my fake life here. And <laughs> yeah. 
what I need to move into an apartment. Do you do that as well? I absolutely do. That is so relatable. I am, you know, I feel like curiosity you know it's nothing wrong with being curious i pull it up and it's like people do so they have five million dollar apartments you know (laughs) so many zeros i can't even comprehend so they've 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 hit these uh different spots and everything okay uh you mentioned museums that's where we kind of let off is there i mean I, i know my personal favorites but well, I mean, there's the Guggenheim, there's the Met, there's, you know, so many, I mean, so many museums in New York. Do you have a maybe a top three that you would recommend? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the classics, right? You just mentioned Guggenheim, the Met, MoMA is a huge classic too. Uh, but I actually really like the more, you know, I like to say underrated museums mm-hmm. that you don't really hear about that often. I love the Whitney Museum. The Whitney is actually right by the meat packing district. So you can go there before you walk the High Line. <laughs> And right. my other museum that I really like to go to is Noguchi Museum. It is in Astoria and it is sculptures. It's really beautiful. There's this beautiful garden that you can literally sit there and just like contemplate life. It's definitely something unique and a bit different to MoMA Met, um, but definitely worth a visit as well. Oh, okay, that's a new one for me. I'm writing that one down. All right. <laughs> You can just sit and contemplate, again, how many zeros are on some of those apartments. <laughs> so you're walking around, you, you're, start, you're, you're seeing some of the things. And, of course, along the way, you're, you're going to see, if you're walking the city, it's the best place to, I mean, that's the best way to actually see New York is on the yes. ground, just walking along. You're going to see famous things, and you're going to see the tall buildings and all of that. You're going to build up an appetite. Surely you're going to build up an appetite. Of course, your stomach growls. You need the fuel to keep walking the 100,000 steps. (laughs) Not getting hit by taxis and all of that stuff. You got to keep, you know, you got to have sustenance to keep the energy up. What are your go-tos as far as places to eat, breakfast, lunch, dinner? Wow. I know, right? That is a loaded, loaded question. Narrow it down and piss people off because no one's going to be happy with your answers because there's (laughs) so many places to eat. There is, there, there are so many places to eat, and honestly, this really depends on your personal preference, right? Um, so I actually think the best food in New York City is in Queens. Um, Mm. Queens is filled with hidden gems. It's filled with you know, a lot of affordable and cheap eats and small businesses and a lot of BIPOC businesses. Um, So I actually recently went to a really good uh, Japanese inspired brunch place called, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher this. It's French. (laughs) Vert Price. So it sounds right to me. (laughs) It's really, it's really good. And they have, you know, it's kind of like a mixture between a Japanese cafe. So you would see a lot of their cafe and brunch items as well as uh, other things that you would find uh, in in Japan. And so they have this dish, omu rice, which is an omelet over rice and it's very light. Um, And then there's also, of course, you know, the famous souffle jiggly pancakes, which is light and fluffy. Um, And then they also have a very light ramen, which I love because sometimes uh, Japanese ramen can be a little bit heavy for me but this broth is so perfect it's so light it's like the perfect comfort food so if that sounds like something you're interested in definitely add that on your list and it's gorgeous like botanical themed you know because a part of new york city is like the aesthetic and they really nail that like the marketing here is chef's kiss you walk in and you're like am i in a different place today (laughs) They really do nail that. So I would love that. I also love um, Clinton Street Bakery, which is, of course, you know, the famous blueberry compote pancakes. Uh, And, you know, if pancakes is your thing, like that's you have to kind of you have to try that. Right. Oh, man. Hungry. You're making me hungry. Yes. I, I, I've heard about it so many times. I've never been there personally. I've heard about it every time I talk to somebody that knows New York, they mention it. And so it's on the list, like with like 800 other restaurants, it's on the list. So you mentioned the the blueberry compote. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I mean, it's, it's definitely a must try. You know what I mean? Like it's good. Like it fills you up. You're like, Ooh, this is yummy. Mm. Yeah. 
Dang. Okay. So now, now your your belly is full. You're feeling happy. You got the smile. You're wearing one, one of those I love New York hats <laughs> and all of its glory. Let's talk about maybe your specialty, Broadway. Let's yeah. talk about shows in New York just to go see, to kind of cap off the day. Uh, it used to be stalwarts like, you know, Phantom of the Opera and things like that. But now the Phantoms, you know, ended its run. What would you recommend maybe as far as uh, shows, not only on Broadway, but maybe uh, off Broadway or just around the city? Yeah, so I love MJ. It's still mm. running. I think it's one of the best Broadway shows I've ever seen. And, you know, the music takes care of itself, right? right? Like the music is classic. But the actors on stage, they give you 1,000%. And it's incredible to watch because I watched it with uh, the original actor who played MJ and then um, the new actor who succeeded him. And they were both amazing. They have different mm -hmm. takes on the character and the nuances are so beautiful to watch. I love watching an actor just work their craft and, you know, the nuances. Oh, so good. For something funny, I really recommend Shucked on Broadway. Okay. Shucked is really funny it's about corn it's a corny musical <laughs> but I'm it's about corn. there you go you sold me I, <laughs> I honestly wasn't sure how i was gonna react but it turned out to be such a good a good time a good fun time like it's kind of what you would expect it's good songs it's a you know joyous occasion three hours <laughs> <laughs> a joyous three-hour corn based fun time I, you got yeah, okay yeah i'm there i'm there let's talk about corn uh maybe if people don't want to uh see a play necessarily is there somewhere you would uh, else you would recommend or or maybe if it's oh man i'm gonna really date myself if it's younger people and they want to go to somewhere that's hip and trendy okay so i have a really kind of interesting experience i recently went to it's called mm -hmm. accomplice the village and it's a mixture of a scavenger hunt and immersive theater on the streets. And I thought that was a really, I had so much fun. I love solving puzzles. I love, you know, doing all of that. And it's a show, a two and a half hour show where you walk around the streets of the village and you solve puzzles. And one thing leads you to the next. And there are these actors that guide you through. So that can definitely be a cool unique lifestyle experience that isn't like super show based where you're sitting in the same seat for three hours mm -hmm. uh but yeah i just i i really like that experience so i wanted to share um that sounds like a lot of fun actually it is. it's called accomplice is yeah accomplice called? the village and i believe okay. at some point neil patrick harris invested in like another location they're they're kind of a spread out around the country as well which was Doogie Hauser invested there. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm with you there. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, that is, that's a lot of great information. You've given us something, you know, places to see places to visit and also places to eat and be entertained. Uh, is there anything we left off? I mean, I have to give a shout out to Chinatown, you know, like I feel like That's some cool. of the best food that you can get for under five dollars is in Chinatown. Any particular restaurants there? Yeah, so so There's many. So many. <laughs> okay, so let's, many. we could do a whole episode on just uh, Chinatown restaurants. No, literally, but I will say that uh, I highly recommend this restaurant called Kong Sik Tong, which is K O N G S I H. K and then T O N G. So it is classic Hong Kong food. And because uh, Hong Kong was colonized by Britain, you know, there's like kind of influences of Western food culture. So we have a really famous dish that is like a baked pork chop rice that in like a tomato sauce. And it's so delicious. It's like a classic. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you're like where do i where do i begin <laughs> i had to mute my microphone i was starting to breathe heavy into it you know? <laughs> sounds so good <laughs> there's also cheese obviously like cheese on top of the rice wow well, come so on yeah, there has to be cheese on it so <laughs> uh wow now 
I'm thinking about that. So we are going to have you back in the future. We're going to talk Hong Kong because I know you have so many places there to share as well. Uh, but before we get going, if people want to follow along with you on social media or online, how do they uh, reach out to you? How do they find you? Yeah, I'm at Vivica Chow on all platforms, V-I-V-E-C-A-C-H-O-W. And I would love to connect you with you there. Vivica Chow, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your insight. So much wonderful goodness for all of our listeners, for all of our watchers out there. So first time in New York, or maybe you've been multiple times, but hopefully we put some new stuff on your list. Keep it right here. It's Unscaled Travel Show. We'll be back in just a minute.